I don't really know. <sighs> I know I was dreaming about something before you found me. It's really fuzzy, but I do remember hearing a bunch of bells ringing. I also remember you were the ones ringing those bells. You were smiling when you did it. I guess you didn't seem so scary after that. Well, I'm glad you're not scared anymore. Shining said as he began to stand up from the couch. But I'm still grounded, Nix. You should go back upstairs before Twilight finds you. But it's so silly, she said, already starting to drift off now that she was away from Rainbow Tassa's snoring. And all I did, Twilight didn't ground me. And all you did was say mean things. You didn't ever do anything bad. Yes, but I'm a big pony, and I should have known better. Sonny said as he came up beside the chair, Nix had claimed as her new bed. Now come on, let's get you to bed. Twilight groaned and grabbed her pillow for far host. But Rainbow Daz is so loud. She's worse than Spike Cat was when he had the dragon flu. Shining Armor already let his horn. Intending to pick up Nyx with his levitation magic and carry her back to Twilight's room. But he eventually sighed and instead turned his magic elsewhere. He took a smaller blanket and was hung over the back of the chair as decoration and laid it across Nyx. What did I say about the cute? He then turned, walked back to the couch, and laid down with his own borrowed blanket and pillow. All right, but if Twilight asked, you snuck down here after I was already asleep. Deal? Shiny armor was only answered by the gentle sounds of breathing. And you could see Nix's eyes had already slid shut. It had been a long day for the young filly. A long day for all of them. And even now, he was finding his eyes growing weary. Nix had granted him some peace of mind. And soon, he had nodded off as well. The magic for Shiny's horn faded as sleep overcame him. His light spell disappearing with it. But not all of the light left the room. A single beacon remained on the staircase. A beacon that sat atop the point of a purple unicorn horn. And beneath that light, Twilight was smiling down at the scene. As he lingered for a moment longer, watching her daughter and brother sleeping peacefully before turning head back into her own room. Sleep tight, BBFF. Your Highness, Miss Fluttershy has arrived a bit earlier and wishes to speak to you. Shall we let her in? Yes, of course. Princess Celestia replied, before turning her attention back to the crystal servants, who were moving an ice sculpture in place in the center of the buffet table. She was overseeing the final preparations for the heartwarming party, which was going to be held in the Canterlot Castle ballroom. All the decorations were in place. All the food was being brought out, and the pony had come in for the train station. All the trains were on schedule, and the characters were waiting to bring every pony's families when they arrived. Everything was coming according to plan. Something Celestia was sure would bring real life to Twilight's mind. Good morning, Princess Celestia. The Sun Princess turned and smiled at Fluttershy as the Yellow Pegasus trotted in from the door. Good morning. I hope every pony was able to get a good night's sleep after staying up so late. I think most every pony did. Fluttershy answered. Though, well, that's kind of why I'm here a little early. Rarity still wasn't out of the bathroom, but I was right and Rainbow Jess hadn't gone out of bed earlier. I think every pony's going to be a girl like getting here. I hope that's okay. And what about Shining Armor? Celestia asked, remembering how he, Nix, and Twilight departed Spell Nexus's manor that night. Princess Celestia kind of made him sleep on the couch. First I said quietly, Ooh, disharmony in matrimonial paradise. Sounds like my favorite cup of tea. Though, I think I take it with a wit of topaz. Celestia and Fluttershy both turned, looking to the ice sculptures to serve as a Venice assembly. The statue had, moments before, been a beautiful carving of the heart's warming heart. But now the ice sculpture looked like a tropical island. The base was covered with a rough, sandy texture that was dotted with sea cells and starfish. A pair of tall palm trees stood, swaying in a non-existent sea breeze, even though they were made out of ice. And reclining in a hammock, hanging between the trees, was a moving and smiling ice statue of discord. What are you doing here? Celestia said, 
as his cell has been struck by a horrible headache. Real axe, Miss Sunshine, Discord said as he climbed out of the hammock. He floated away from the sculpture. The ice compromised his body melted, being replaced with his normal hot spots of flesh. At the same time, the ice sculpture began to morph and blend, returning to the shape it had been moments before. He then produced a scroll out of thin air, from Furley to reveal a half hastily prepared list that was dotted with green check marks, red circles, and a few rude doodles of the Sun Princess. Despite your every effort to send me to the foreign corners of this very round world, I am caught up on all my chores. Furthermore, I was invited to attend this festive get together by my dearest friend, Full Rettershy, he said before snapping his claw. In a moment, he, Celestia, and Fluttershy were in full body pajamas and lying on a trio of large beds. All different colors of pink. Celestia and Fluttershy had curlers in their manes, while Discord had on a facial mask of strawberry jam. Okay. I think we should all be in agreement. Penstruck should never be allowed to write Discord ever again. Oh, it's not that he writes it badly. He writes it too well. He writes it too insane. I think we should be worried. <laughs> Still... Uh, it's time to this. I want to hear all the details. What did Shiny do to get to put in the doghouse? Was it scandalous? I, who should I ask to the prom? Be honest, I'm really torn between myself and myself. Discord held up a pair of pictures, each featuring himself. In one, he looked like a chess club nerd. In another, a black jacket leather bad cult. Oh, 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 I, I, I got I with the fonts, I got with the fonts! Discord. Celestia said, trying to keep her temper level, as she used her magic to remove the curler from her mane. I don't know if now's the best time for long stories. Celestia, darling, your mane is never going to look fabulous if you don't leave it those at least overnight. And there stepped his claw, and Discord had reported to curlers as Celestia's mane. A frown began to crease the princess's lips, but before she could raise her voice to Discord, Fluttershy spoke up. Maybe there's a way we could tell you what happened quickly. That way, Celestia still has time to make sure everything is ready for the party. Oh, I suppose there's a way we could do it quickly, Discord said, beginning to smile devilishly as he looked at Celestia. How about a makeover montage? Before Celestia could protest, it had already begun. For her and Fluttershy, time seemed to run and fast forward. They were out in Canterlot, going to Batista's stores. Celestia was trying on outfits, getting head shakes and nods from Fluttershy and Discord. All the while, Fluttershy was telling Discord what happened. Or rather, she could feel her mouth moving, but couldn't hear anything except some oddly thumping music in her ears. Life is a runway! But almost as soon as it started, the tree of themselves found back in the ballroom. Celestia and Fluttershy were each carrying shopping bags. Celestia herself was wearing a lovely, new heart-swearing dress that was a mixture of lighter blues and whites that went well with her coat and blue mane and the color of her mane. I must say, it sounds like every pony here has been doing a good job of creating some holiday chaos in my absence. This course says he flew in the air, rekindling gently. Logs catching fire, mental breakdowns, folly catwalks, royal marital trouble, and a big burly lumberjack named Lumberjack. All it needed was a civil uprising at dinner forks. If you had pulled that off, I would have happily given you my personal seal of approval! King! Discord approved. Hmm. Oh, what the heck, I'm feeling generous. Discord turned his wrist, making a sticker appear out of thin air. Was he proudly stuck to Fluttershy's forehead with his thumb? I'll give you a gold star for effort. Just don't talk about it so lightly around Twilight. Celestia advised, as he set down the shopping bag she had been levitating. Wait, are those presents for Luna? Oh no, I'm smart enough to realize Twilight is going to be in angry Mother Hawk mode. Discord said as he examined his own eagle claw, inspecting the red polish that now adorned his nails. Though, are you ponies finally going to let me meet next today? I can't start a bad guy's anonymous until I've been introduced to a fellow forward villain. Discord flew away taking a seat at one of the tables in the hall, with twenty copies of himself in a variety of outfits. Hello, my name is Discord. Hi, Discord! The twenty copies shout back. 
I'm proud to announce that I've now gone 61 days without an act of malicious chaos, and that the gemstone pox that I gave to that group of dragons 62 days ago has cleared up nicely. Words of encouragement then happy smiles came from the 20 clothes. He's trying to encourage the original Discord. One even offered him a hug, which he gladly took. A tear in his eyes. Wait, is that Starlight Glimmer? You can't start your <laughs> meeting yet! See, the original Discord said, BGA is all about group therapy, and only by talking out our problems that we're able to reach real breakthroughs. He then snapped his fingers, causing the support group to disappear as he floated back towards Celestia Fluttershy. But believe me, the last thing any pony wants is for me to talk to myself. Even I'd go crazy. I think I might be able to talk Twilight into it, Fluttershy said. But you'll need to be on your best behavior, okay? But of course, Fluttershy, Discord said, as with a small pop of magic, he put on a fine tuxedo and a dapper hat. I am reformed after all, and thus quite capable of being civil at high society functions. As long as you don't bring in a certain college friend of yours. Hey, Smooth! How's it hanging? He then smiled and held out a paw to the yellow pegasus. If, of course, I'm allowed to work some of the chaos out of my system beforehand. Care to join me for a flight around Canterlot? I feel like throwing a few blue fairy flavored snow cone snowballs, and then maybe making a few snow ponies come alive and sing as a barbershop quartet. Oh, can you sing carols? I want flutters on this! I, what I asked is he jumped to the air to hover next to Discord. I think everybody will love that. I'm going to have them sing drinking songs from the Emerald Islands, but I suppose carols could be fun. 